Curves are a feature of many graphics programs that seem mysterious to lots of people, but there really is no magic to them. In this video, I'll show you exactly how they work and show you the one trick you can use in 99% of situations. So let's jump in. What's up guys, it's Trent, and today we're gonna to be looking at how curves work in Affinity Photo. And actually this goes for all Affinity products, Affinity Designer and Affinity Publisher. So if you use those programs, this video will also be relevant for them. Now in Affinity products, a curve is a type of adjustment layer. And adjustment layers are non-destructive ways of making modifications to our document. I have a couple of videos on adjustment layers on my channel, so be sure to watch those if you want a more detailed description of them. But for now, I have this black and white image here, and I'm gonna start with black and white in this video just because I think it's a little easier to explain the concepts. We'll look at color a little bit later. So like I said, curves are an adjustment. So with my layer selected here, I'll select the adjustment layers down here. I'll click it. And you can see I have this curves option here. Now it brings up this window here, which is the curves adjustment. Now, one thing about this tool here is it's actually showing us two types of information. On the one hand, we have this curve here, which is the line, but then we also have this histogram in the background, which is the blue. And these are actually telling us two different things on the same graph. So I actually wanna back up and explain what the histogram is doing. And there's actually a slightly better tool to show that, which is the histogram view. So let's look at that first. So I've created this demo document here and there's four squares. One is pure black, one is pure white, and the other two are some level of gray. So let's look at the histogram for this document. So I'm going to window histogram. And what you see here is a representation of the values in this document. And when I say values, I mean levels of gray, including white and black. Now you can see there's four spikes in this diagram of equal height, and that goes with the four colors I have here, or rather four black and white levels. So the way to read this is left to right is going from black to white. So on the left side here, I have my pure black color. On the right side here, I have my pure white color. And these other two spikes are levels of gray in between. So you can see this spike here, it says level 123. That's the level of gray it is. And it's referring to this one here. Let me open up that gray in the color picker. And you can see in fact, its color is 123. When RGB are all the same color, that means it's a level of gray and 123 is this level. So left to right is how black or white it is. Up and down is a count of it. So the higher the spike, the higher the count. Now right now you can see they're all equal. Let's make it unequal here. Let me select the black and let me move it over here. Let's make more of the image black. And now you can see this black spike is still the highest, but the other values went down because proportionally there's less of them now. And in fact, if you wanna know exactly how many pixels it is, you can hover over the spike there. You can see level zero has about 1.4 million pixels. And I can get all different proportions here. When I do this, you can see it's mostly white, so the white spike is the highest. Let's look at a slightly more complicated example. So now I have a gradient, and the gradient is going from pure black to pure white on the right. What do you think the histogram for this will look like? Well, let's take a look. Window, histogram. And you can see it's basically even all the way across the top. And that's to be expected because the gradient has a perfect blending of colors from black to white, so all colors are equally represented. Now you may notice a little bit of jagginess here, that's just because of the resolution, and also it's computationally expensive for programs like this to create histograms. So there's a little bit of inaccuracy. If you want to improve the accuracy of a histogram, you can click on the exclamation point here, and it tries to do a better job. So this is what it looks like when you have an even gradient in your image. Okay, so let's go back to our original image here, and let's open the histogram for this. Now we see something that looks kind of more realistic. And we can kind of figure out what's going on in here in our image just by looking at this. So I'll click the exclamation point just to normalize it. So what these peaks and valleys mean relative to our image here? Well, we see this big spike of black here. I assume that's probably this dark area here under the bridge. That seems to be the blackest part of the image. And probably all this white up here is going to be the sky. The sky is a very big part of the image. And then we have just a lot of this kind of common mid-tone here which are probably gonna be things like the bridge itself and the mountains in the background here. So if I bring up my curves option here, the histogram is basically the same shape and it means the same thing. It's a little bit more squished, but you can see this peak here is this here, this black here is this black here. So that's what the histogram on the curves tool is showing us. So now with the curves menu here, let me adjust the curves and I'll show you some differences that happen here and then we'll explain exactly what's happening. So you can see if I drag the curve up here, my image is getting brighter. If I drag it down, my image is getting darker. And in fact, I can actually add multiple points on the curve here. And I could make one part brighter and I could make another part darker. But what is actually happening here and can we get any use out of it? 
Now with the curves, we have the x-axis and the y-axis. And just like in the histogram, going from left to right is going to be our black to white value. Now for curves, the y-axis is also black and white values. So the lower left point is the black point here, and the top point is the white point. But what does that actually mean? Well, when the curve is a straight line, we're basically getting a one-to-one -one mapping of the x-axis to the y-axis. So for example, if you have the value 0.5 right here in the middle, you can go up, you hit our curve, and that matches the 0.5 on the y-axis. And this goes on for the whole curve. So this is kind of the definition of a slope of one. There's no real difference between the input and the output. Any point here is going to match to its corresponding point on the y-axis, and there's no change. So now here's an example where I moved the curve up a bit, and you can see the image got brighter. So what did this do? So if we have a middle gray value of 0.5, it's actually going to hit the curve up here, and it's going to be raised to a higher level, 0.75. So you can see basically on this diagram, everything that hits this curve here is going to a higher value. You can ignore this red curve for now, by the way, but you can think of everything being lifted up. And again, the histogram here might distract you. Don't really pay attention to that too much in this diagram, it's just kind of there. But what you really wanna look at is what's the input going to the output. Now here we have an example, what happens if I move the curve up a lot? Well, you can see the image becomes very blown out because all these that are greater than 0.5 are being mapped to pure 1.0 white. And that's what's causing all of this whiteness down here. So any pixel over here is going straight to white. Let's look at it in the actual file and do it in real time. So this is our default image. And you can see it's just a straight line. Input equals output. Everything's the same. Now let's take the first case I did before. I'm going to drag everything up. So I'm remapping all these inputs to a higher output. Everything's kind of getting lifted. And that final example I showed you could be really extreme. Everything is hitting this line here and is mapping straight to white over here on the left. I can hit reset to make it go back to normal. I can go the other way. I can pull it down. So now if you look at this area, all this is being grounded to pure black. Now there's interesting things you can do. I can make the blacks lighter like this. I can also click another dot here and I can make the lights darker. And you can see this is kind of creating a negative image effect. Why? Because the blacks are all going to the whiter side and the whites are all going to the blacker side. This isn't really how I recommend creating a negative, but it's possible. In fact, if I flip the curve completely opposite, I get a perfectly negative image. You can't understand why that's happening now. Everything is being flipped to the opposite. Black is going to white, white is going to black, and everything between is going to its complement. So I'll reset this. So if you want to practice this in action, I really recommend downloading a black and white photo, opening the curves, and just kind of moving these around and seeing if you can predict what will actually happen. Okay, so now let's look at a color image here, and I'll open the curves again. Let's create a curves adjustment. And you can see the histogram is a little more complicated. We get our red, greens, and blues pulled out here, but you can just ignore that. The main thing you want to worry about is this line here. Now, you do have the ability to edit the curves individually, but that's kind of beyond the scope of this video. I think for most cases, we can just edit the main curve here. Now here I'm gonna show you the adjustment that's probably gonna suit your needs in about 99% of situations. And that's just the simple S-curve. So the way to do an S-curve is very simple. You just drag your brights up a little bit more and drag your darks down a little bit more. And what this does is it gives you a more contrasting image. So if I close this, let me toggle before and after. So this is before, after, before, after. So if you look in areas like this, you can see it's much more gray and low contrast before. This is the before. And then we did our curves. It got darker and a little more contrasty. Same thing with the mountains over here. And this is really the definition of contrast, increasing your brights and decreasing your darks. Let me reset that. So just to review one more time, I'll bring up my brights here and I'll bring down my darks. I'm doing it very extreme to show you the example here. And this is an S curve here. Now, if the effect is too strong, you can adjust the opacity of it. So 0% is no adjustment being applied. You can fine tune it to what you want. Another thing you can do is change the blend mode to soft light. So I'll select the blend mode here. I'll do soft light. That's a very common adjustment to make to curves. So this is before, after, before, after. Here we have another image I downloaded from online and it looks a little low contrast. It kind of has a lot of grades in it. So let's see how we use curves to fix this. So I'll select curves. And once again, I'll just add my standard S-curve adjustment. I'll close it. And now we can see before, after, before, after. So that took about five seconds of work. And if you want, you can also do some type of blend mode. I'll try soft light again. 
before, after, before, after. So in the vast majority of cases, people just do this S curve to add some more contrast. And that's probably 99% of what you'll use curves for. As you saw, curves are a type of adjustment layer. If the concept is new to you, I recommend watching my short video on adjustment layers. I'll put a link to it right here. Hope you found this useful and thanks for watching.